it seems to be that all human cultures produce these kinds of aphorisms. They have some kind of functional value in our social interactions. It's useful to be able to boil things down to essences, but it's also a kind of mnemonic, really, isn't it? You know, when you can just repeat something, which is a familiar saying, you don't have to explain the whole rationale behind it. And I think that's partly what they do. They're kind of a shorthand. If you say one of these proverbs to someone, they know what you mean, and you've only said one short sentence. You'd have to offer an explanation. On the other hand, the downside is, I think we can kind of hide behind the authority of them. So it's kind of like, this must be true, this is the wisdom of the ancients, rather than sort of taking responsibility for our usage of them and the extent to which they, they're, they're not true. You'd clearly like people to be more self-aware when they use these expressions or when they hear them used, but you wouldn't like to expunge them from our vocabulary. I mean, it's impossible to expunge them, but do you want them to only use them with inverted commas around them? No, and I don't want to be pedantic about it. I mean, for example, one of the things people are pedantic about is that the exception proves the the rule one. People turn around and say, oh, well, of course, this, is, this isn't this is true. Because in the... And it's true, the origins of the expression comes from the word provare in Latin and in the French uh, equivalent, which is actually about testing the rule. So the exceptions test the rule. And there are people who go around who, who every time someone says, oh, well, the exception proves the rule in the kind of modern usage, insists on pedantically correcting them. And I, I really want, want to do that. Because although it's not precisely true, again, the, the reason for saying it is, is quite a good one, perhaps, that the point about exceptions is they may not literally prove the rule. But one thing they do is they, they draw attention to the fact that the rule normally applies. In that sense, they prove the rule. By the mere fact that you recognise it as an exception, you recognise that normally something else happens. So I, I, I don't want to expunge them. I, 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 I love them and I love hearing uh, new ones. They're fascinating ones from, from uh, other cultures. And I do use them a lot of the time myself. I use a lot of quotations myself because it's not just proverbs. They're also well-known quotations. So, you know, if someone's come up with a nice pithy way of, of putting something, then, of course, we should use it. I just, as you say, it's just the question of being a little bit more self-reflective about it. But that's the same with everything. You know, I think people on the whole should be more careful about thinking about what they're saying and not just saying things that they've kind of assume are true, they've come to believe them and, and that's the end of it. I am in favour of constant self-monitoring, which may sound tiring and maybe it is a bit, but it's, it's also rewarding and necessary. You mentioned people coming up with new ones, and I think that's interesting. They're, it's not simply a collection of 15th century wisdom that's been passed down to us, but you know, the internet age is producing these things all the time. They're, there's obviously a human impulse to try to adduce rules that are pithy and capture something about human behaviour or the way the world operates. Yeah, well, indeed, it's coming full circle with Twitter, isn't it? <clears throat> now, I actually did start Twittering. I was very ambivalent about Twitter because when I first looked at it, it seemed to me that most of it was just banal people saying, you know, just come back from the shops, phew, that was heavy, and, well, I, I don't really care. But, you know, I did think, well, maybe it's possible to Twitter in, in a way that echoes this kind of thing, put out these little thought, something to make you think. So in amongst the noise of the day, you get an idea which, which makes you think. And so I've been trying to do that. So I've been constantly trying to come up with, with little things, and Obviously, I'd be very surprised if any of them have the longevity of any of the things in this book. But there is a, a kind of a skill there. In the same way, though, I hope that people who do follow the Twitter feed, it's um, Micro Philosophy is the, the name of the feed. I hope that the people who do them use them as, as springboards, you know, and don't just go, oh, that's good, or, or that's clever, or that sounds good. But to, to think about something a bit more. Last question. Should you judge this book by its cover? <laughs> <laughs> Should you judge it? Well, we had quite good fun with the cover. I won't tell you exactly how it is, but if you are in a bookshop, uh, have a look at it and um, have a look carefully at it. I think it's an interesting title from that point of view because I don't know what people will make of it when they see it. One thing they might think is, oh, it's a throwaway, disposable little book about proverbs, you know, uh, easily chewable pop philosophy. And it, I hope that is the wrong judgment. I hope they'll find there's there's more to it than that. So they sh they shouldn't judge it from that, for sure. <laughs>